is the world famous Glen Gorge. It stretches west from its Main Street entrance in Watkins Glen to the Watkins Glen State Park. The eighth wonder of the world, they call it. It has 19 waterfalls. Very, very picturesque. We just went green. Benny, that looks like something that you might be interested in, aren't you? An old cliff diver from uh, way back? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> watching uh, Rusty Wallace and Mark Martin right now figure out who's going to win this race. It's been close since the drop of the green flag. Mark Martin has held the lead for most of that time except during pit stops, but Rusty has never been more than just a few car lengths behind. They're bottled up behind now some slower traffic. That's Elton Sawyer and Ronnie Hamilton. That's sometimes a break you look for if you're a Rusty Wallace trying to find a way by Mark Martin. Uh, have Mark get held up behind somebody and look go the other way, but didn't happen this time. It's just clear out of here. Well, this was a very quick caution, and I think NASCAR allowed all the cars to pit that wanted to, whether they were left down or not, during that, yeah. uh, when they came around that uh, We did see time. Sterling uh, there in with uh, the first. Uh, he was, of course, a lap down. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> <It was> close. <laughs> Face full of Ford. Oh, you see how mean that thing looks when he gets up there. Robert Kressler is still having a problem in the 33 car. Somewhere on the racetrack, going slow. He came through the inner loop up here, and he's shaking the car back and forth like something, uh, like, almost like a fuel problem, but uh, he's just coasting. Got a yellow flag up here. concerned about was Derek Cope and he did start going again so I think we're okay but there's a lot of damage to the central board of uh, Morgan Shepard and there's the 33 stall car up on the right corner of the street with Robert Presley so that would be why we have the full course caution if we do. John what's the situation with 33? Well earlier on Robert only had fourth gear he just had fourth gear for the transmission apparently the transmission has gone ahead and given it up as they say the crew has already left the pit and headed back to the garage area hoping to get robert pushed in and morgan shepherd gets comes down pit road you see all the damage and now bob the caution flag waves at the start finish line so the second caution within just a very few laps waves over watkins Glen road course now take a look at this this is headed into the interloop Three cars go for the same spot. We've seen two go for the same spot, but Ned, three of them went for this. There's no way that you can get in there, Bob. Three abreast. Dick Trickle, a lap down. He gets uh, taps, Morgan Shepard, and there's Derek Cope spinning off on the left side of your screen out into the grass area. And the Brett Bodine comes in, locks his brakes up. Now from Jeremy Mayfield's in-car camera, the roof cam, real time. Let's watch it. That looks like some real estate in front of him, and all of a sudden, everything breaks loose up in front of him. He makes a good move to the outside, that trickle there, and Jeremy Mayfield drives right on by. The cones were flying everywhere, and uh, cars were spinning everywhere, but everybody is okay. But we are under caution for Robert Presley's stalled car as Mark Martin continues to lead at Watkins Glen. You. There's part of the crowd here at Watkins Glen, estimated at 150,000. It says, Davey, Alan, Neal, J.D., take care of Jerry, in reference to Jerry Garcia, of course, who passed away this past week. And early this morning, boy, he lost one of my heroes, Mickey Mantle, passed well, away. He was a hero of mine, too, Bob. Sorry to hear that. All right, let's go to Jerry Punch for a report on Pit Road. Jerry? 
guys prior to this caution flag there was a lot of calculators flying down here basically here's what they were trying to figure out averaging about 3.8 miles per gallon on the road course it's about a mile and a gallon less than they get on noble track because of all the shifting the 24 seems to hey by our calculations it may call for lap 90 which is the last lap and we should make it now the six car said it'll our car will begin coughing and spitting on lap 89 and we may not make it the two cars said hey our car's gonna cough and quit on lap 88 now Gordon, as I told you, they thought they could make it, so he stayed out. But the six car said, absolutely no way we can take a chance. We're going to come down pit road. They told Russ, he said, you do what the six car does. So obviously, here comes Mark, and here comes Rusty. They will come in, top them off. They should have no problem making it from here on. But Gordon is going to stay out, try to possibly get a road course victory, and lengthen that Winston Cup point lead. Jerry, you told us early in the show that track position is everything, and they're losing a lot of track position here, but it could pay off for them at the end of the race. Jeff Bodine, oh, oh and a collision as they come out. Rusty ran into the back of Bodine, and I think Bodine may have hit Mark Martin. He appeared to from this angle, guys, and I'll tell you, what they were doing is they were getting, they were slowing down to let that field go by because of the stop and go paddle at the end of pit road. They really got jammed up there. Wow, this could really... And we can see how much damage to the right front of Rusty Wallace's car. He's going to have to go back in the pit because the tire is rubbing the fender. You're right, Benny. A lot of smoke coming from that. Yeah. He's, he's got too much damage to continue there. Mark Martin, he pulled up the side of Mark and said, how does it look? And Mark said, he waved him off and said, you got to go back to the pits. Yeah. Let's look at it again. Okay, here they come out of the pits. And... As uh, Bill Weber pointed out, that Mark Martin slowed down before those on the racetrack to go by, and Rusty, still going here pretty good to head of steam, runs into the back of Jeff Bodine. Take a look at it from the helicopter. And here we are, Mark Martin leaves. Here comes Jeff Bodine at a pretty good rate of speed down through there, but it looks like he's going to get slowed down. He sees what's happening up there. Rusty doesn't see what's happening, apparently, and he comes in and hits Jeff Bodine. Bodine hits Mark Martin. Don't think it did too much damage to Mark Martin's car. Yeah, I think Rusty came out on the worst end of this deal. Let's take a look from Mark's bumper cam looking back on Jeff. There's the hit that, you well, know, it's pretty, pretty good. significant. Yeah. Really, yeah, it's, it's harder than it looks. Looks like it could have knocked that spoiler up a little bit back there. There's the damage on the right side of Rusty's car. Smoke pouring from the right corner. Well, Rusty Wallace just cannot catch a break, can he? Nope, that's for sure. Sixth in points coming in, 473 behind the leader, Jeff Gordon. And at this point of the uh, season, you figure that the Winston Cup champion is going to come from the top five because the top five are only separated by 218 points. Well, the fine folks at Steel are bringing you today's terrific helicopter shots. Steel makers of a full line of leaf blowers, trimmers, and the number one selling brand of chainsaws nationwide. Steel, powerful, easy to use, and durable. Great shots from overhead at Watkins Glen. You know, Mark Martin, I think, uh, stopped on his own. I don't believe that the stop man was down that far. I think that Steve Mill or someone probably said to Mark, look, you've got to let the field go by. You can't blend in in the middle of the pack. You have to wait till the field goes by. So I think he was slowing down his own because the stop man that holds the paddle is back up on pit road uh, 30, 40 yards before these fellas had the accident. So I think that Steve Neal probably told him that, and Mark did it on his own. You're exactly right, Benny, because the paddle was actually green when they emerged from their pit stalls. And Mark started coming down pit road, and either on his own or, as you mentioned, from work from Steve Neal slowed down, and that's when that chain reaction accident happened. And the paddle was green when Mark emerged from his pit stall. Okay, the green flag is coming out, and Rusty Wallace, let's see. He's staying out, isn't he? Let's see. Nope, he's oh, coming, coming in. down pit road. He and Elton Sawyer both coming down pit road. So, boy, it is a tough break for Rusty Wallace and the Miller Genuine Draft Team as he comes down pit road slowly. There you can see his uh, car headed into the pits at the 35 miles an hour speed limit. They'll have to perhaps change that right side tire. Definitely pull that cheap metal away. Gary Punch. Unbelievable. 
unbelievable, the man who dominated the road course races from 1987 to 1990, winning five out of seven of it. Again, has not gone to victory lane since June of 1990, and looks like it won't happen today. Right front fender crumpled back in. The crew now pulling, trying to get that fender pulled away. Todd Perrin now trying to pull the fender back up. One crew member inside, and what they're working on is the area of the brake caliper, and now Robin Pemberton gets out here and will try to cut one of the brake ducts that apparently has gotten wrapped around part of the A-frame. So a lot of valuable time to remember. It takes over a minute and 15 seconds to run a lap here, even under green, this late in the race. So Rusty in no jeopardy of losing a lap, but possibly losing the race. Well, that may already be gone, Bob. And here come the leaders now off of corner number 11. And so Rusty will lose a lap. Jeff Gordon is the leader of the race. And Wally Dahlenbach is second. He may be making a move on Jeff. Wally steps out of line, then ducks back in from behind the DuPont Chevrolet, chased by Ricky Rudd, Terry Labonte, Bobby Labonte, and Daryl Waltrip, your top six. They're in single file formation. Let's go back to Rusty Wallace's situation. Here is the real time in car as he ran into the back of Jeff Bodine a few minutes ago as he was coming off pit road. Rusty waits on pit road for the damage to be repaired so that he can get back out there in competition. It it looks like we've got the, leader, the new leader, guys. Yeah. New leader is Wally Dallenbach. Boy, he How is about that? <laughs> driving his heart out here today. We'll see how it happens. That's setting up coming up, I think, out of one. He's moved to the inside of the DuPont Chevrolet, and he's going to have a run up into the S's, or I guess that's headed toward me, actually, for the inner loop. And he outbreaks him, has the preferred line, and he's going to come through the inner loop with a big lead. So Wally Dahlenbach makes the move going into the inner loop. Let us not forget, then, that he finished second here to Mark Martin in 1993. He started that race, and this is his uh, fifth race here at the Glen, so this is by no means a surprise, but yet he is leading the rest of the veterans. Did he test in this car up here, or did he do all this practicing yesterday and, and uh, Friday and Saturday, or did he come up and Bill Davidson test his car? Does anyone yeah, know? No, they, they did come up and test the car, Benny. So he knew what he wanted under the car when, uh, when they came back here this week. Yes, they tested and were very pleased with the test that they ran. Well, right now, he's running away with whatever he's got underneath there. <laughs> he's just getting with it. And meanwhile, Mark Martin is back in the pack there trying to come back up through the field. And Jerry Punch is with his crew chief. Let's try to uncover some of the mystery here, Steve. We saw Mark Martin slow while leaving the pits. Why did he slow down? Well, Mark's real aware of what's going on on the racetrack. He looked in his mirror when he came on pit road and saw about the 15 or 20 cars just hit. He knew with us just getting gas for two or three seconds. When we pulled off pit road, we'd be ahead of some of the cars on the racetrack and you can't come out of pits in front of them so in order to get lined up right in the queue he slowed down that's some guys just weren't using their head and i guess they run over each other that's the, that's the story mark martin trying to wait till he, and fall in at the tail of the field and you saw what happened behind it elaborating on your point just a little bit benny uh indeed wally did test here and turned in the fourth fastest speed during the test at 117.6 the fastest by the way were martin wallace and Ron Fellows, who of course is already out on this event. So it's Wally Dallenbach up front, followed by Gordon, Rudd, Labonte, and Labonte.